Welcome to the Octopod. Yes, that's Octopod with two Ds. Because in life, double Ds makes things much, 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 much better. True! I'm Curtis. I'm the loud one. And this is Chris. He's the fat one. <laughs> Guess what time it is? It's April! week baby in today's podcast we'll be talking about all the rise of the planet of the ape films we are monkeying around today if you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> i think i sound like seth rogan i don't like that you kind of did I, I, I don't like that at all <laughs> Before we begin talking about the rise of the Planet of the Apes, guys, you have to leave us questions. Maybe some silly little comments. I don't even care anymore. I'm, like, so desperate. I'm even taking highlights now. Questions and highlights. So just add a comment or something. Do it! All right, just do it. For God's sake, just do it. Just do it! Please? Starting this ape week with the first rise of the Planet of the Apes film. Let's talk about it. We're talking about Rise of the Planet of the Apes? We're talking about Rise of the Planet of the Apes, baby. Because what? I'm feeling... <sighs> like an ape! I'm feeling like an ape! Like an ape, baby. <laughs> Woo! And I'm rising! And I'm seated. Like an ape. I think I look good with this thing on, actually. You know what? For some reason, I feel like I... Uh, I pull off the monkey look, right? Yeah, it kind of feels nice, too. Right? It doesn't feel that bad. I except I hear, like, this... There's this weird sound that I can hear within the ears. Almost like uh, I have, like, conch shells on my ears. Yeah, it's like it's filtering everything to sound like it's, like, quieter. A little bit, yeah. It's like I'm silencing my own hearing. It's, it's kind not of bizarre. that we're yelling. We just can't hear each other well. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But, uh, rise of the Planet of the Apes! Rise of the Planet of the Apes, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're in it, dude. We're in it to win it, baby. We here. You know what? Rise of the Planet of the Apes is actually a really, really good movie. Honest to God, man, the whole introduction to how, like, it begins is so good. It, I think it's extremely, uh, genius in a sense that the, um, that it, it begins to, as a serum for Alzheimer's, essentially. It's yeah. Will just trying to figure out a way to cure his father's uh, Alzheimer's. And that alone was genius. That was phenomenal. I really liked that entire storyline as, like, that was the beginning of it all. And they were just, like, doing animal testing and things get a little out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that they also show that, you know... Even though it did significantly help. Like, it was really sad, like, just seeing how it did help his father. But then afterward, he slowly built immunity to it. And it was getting... And then when his Alzheimer's came back, man, it hit even harder. Oh, it went, like, full like, throttle, dude. Geez. Full throttle, man. Holy shit. That it was got really bad. That was insanely sad, man. Yep. So, in a way, it did help for a certain amount of time, but the deterioration hit twice as fast and twice as hard. Pretty much. It, it, was, like, it was more so, like, it wasn't a cure. It was more so something that could relieve it. For yeah. a set amount of time. And after that, it's just like... It, it was interesting because even though he tried giving him higher doses, it stopped working. Yeah. Like, it was just like the body just completely, like, as you said, built an immunity to it. And it's just like, that's all. That's, that's it. Yeah. You know? Can't do nothing more. Bro, you're screwed. But then it's like with the apes, it just made them insanely smart. Oh, but it was like the serum made his father smart as well. Yeah. You know, because like his father was like picking up things very quickly. Yeah, it was almost like a, 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 a brain enhancer. Yeah, like a, a, a um, and that's why the apes became super smart. Yeah, because it enhanced their brain and, power. But, but the but the apes, on the other hand, the apes it, like they didn't have uh anything but, to, to kind of they didn't build an immunity to it. They just became like full blown giga smart. Yeah, and I, I just like the whole thing of Caesar's story is wonderful. Oh. And dude, Andy Circus in general. Oh, dude, dude is Ugh. just masterful. They couldn't have picked a better actor to play Caesar. God I'm telling no, you, man. not at all. After Gollum for the Lord of the Rings, uh, in the Lord of the Rings, dude. After that, dude, he was just like he was doing everything, man. He was doing so much good shit, man. He he, he just he knows how to to make it work and he, sell it. It's like not only is he a phenomenal actor, but he knows how to move more than anything else. He's got movement nailed with whatever he does, whether it's like an ape or a creature of sorts. 
You know, he just, he has the movement down and everything to it. Yeah, he really sells, it's like body movements. It's just crazy good. Yeah. And, like, seeing how, like, Caesar really just was so desperate to get out there into the world, because, you know, being closed in and everything in shelter, which I can't blame either. You know, Monkey's hella smart. Yeah. You're, you're... But it was also very sad in the beginning how he, how Will even gets Caesar is because Caesar's mother was protecting him and they thought she was just violent because of the the because Bro. of the Can you imagine you're sitting there at that meeting and you're like, yo, what's the serum yo, we're gonna talk about? Yo, that's And then wild, literally man. the the ape drops in on the table and you blast its ass. You blast the ape's boop, ass. Boop, 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 boop. Like bro, yo, but all those shareholders are like, bro, no, we're done. Yeah, we... Uh, you, you literally... Thanks for the show, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I don't know about that one. Like, this was supposed to be, like, the centerpiece yeah. right here. This was supposed to show us what we're getting ourselves into, and you literally shot it in front of us on the table. <laughs> like, bro. Yeah, but again, it was like it was sad. Like, Caesar's mother literally got blasted. Yeah. That was it, just because they thought, oh, she's aggressive because the... Uh, the, the serum uh, makes the, her angry. The serum's making her angry. And it's like, no, she was just protecting her child. That was just absolutely depressing. That was sad, man. Like, yeah. that... that, that Feels bad, man. That's it, dude. Yeah, but still, Caesar got a pretty good upbringing, man. It was no, Caesar really got cool. a really good upbringing, man. You know, Will treated him very good. Very, very good. Yeah, but it was really interesting as well to see his perspective. And when he started getting upset, when he started noticing he was being treated like an animal or a pet. Kind of like when he saw the dog on the leash and everything and stuff. And he's like, that slow realization. Well, it's like, am I actually like part of the family or am I just like a pet yeah, yeah. That, 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 that recognition that was really interesting seeing that too it's the it's the it's the it's the old saying of being too smart for your own good kind of thing yeah and, and you, you know and you can see because of that you know that he started to question his existence and it made him and that in itself got him a little angry too and you saw oh, you remember he never liked having the collar on yeah and remember, remember when uh, will would take him to the woods yeah in the beginning would bring him with a collar and then like Take it off and then set him. Uh, set yeah, him. it's it, like you said when he saw the dog with the collar. He resented it heavily. Oh yeah, because he understood what it meant. Yeah, you know, like the the collar was a symbol. Yeah, and not only that, but like how when his father kind of was like losing his mind again, he like crashed into the neighbor's car and he literally jumped the neighbor and bit off his finger. Oh yeah. To be fair though, that guy was an asshole. He was, but he like was an asshole. Biting his finger off! Had it coming. Yeah, but then that's the kind of... Even the realization, like, even after he does it, it kind of, like, quickly clicks in his mind. It's like, oh, what did I do? It sets in, I should have not done that. Yeah, and, that, and that was the saddest thing, man, was having to see him be separated from Will and be put into that little, like, um... I'm gonna just call it ape prison. Yeah. That, that was, like, prison, prison man. Ape like, prison, those dude. cells and everything... Were horribly they, have, like, depressing. This, they have like this little like ape gathering in the middle, and you're like, oh, that's kind of cute, and that's nice, but it's like, a, oh, but nighttime's here, get in your damn cages, you stupid apes. Yep. You know? Uh, and then they have like Draco Malfoy. <laughs> Malfoy. Uh, yeah, casting spells on them, Bro, man. as soon as he was talking mad shit and treating the apes like- You know he's gonna die! Dude, I'm like, man, he's dead. Bro, there's, there's no, no way. Not even that, but what's interesting is that he was killed accidentally. Yeah, that is true. Because uh, Caesar even... accidentally shocked him while there was water around him, and he didn't know that was the out that was going to be the outcome of the situation. Yeah, that was interesting too. His reaction when he, he realized... just wanted to shock him, and he accidentally like he killed him. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he zapped got him, him good. And he zapped just... him good. And I kind of like that from Caesar, like you're just saying, like just the realization, like what did I do? Like, yeah. Even he knew well, that was he, wrong. He, well, he knew that was because his intention wasn't to kill him. It was just to zap him, give him a taste of his own medicine. Yeah. He never intended to kill him. It was just accidentally, you know. Water was spilling around, man. Shit got a little crazy. Yep. And no. I kind of like how he, he started, like, building that confidence and, and becoming, like, um, kind of like the head honcho of the ape prison. The ape prison? Well, yeah. He kind of took it uh, took it over, in a sense. Yeah. You know? Because there, there was, like, um, oh, my God, what was the other ape's name? Oh, my God. What was his name? Was it a rocket that was like Rocket? Was it Rocket? Rocket was the Rocket first... becomes like his number two in the films. But Rocket was like the number one of the eight prison men. Rocket was hot shit. Was it a Rocket? I'm yes. pretty sure it was Rocket. Yeah, it's Rocket. And Caesar's like, you ain't shit. Bam! Shows him who the top ape is, man. Yeah, but not only that, but also getting the gorilla on his side as well. Oh yeah, the, that was the, the that was the, the big, big gorilla, dude. When you got muscle like a gorilla, man, none of these apes ain't gonna are gonna mess with you. Yeah. That gorilla alone could have squashed all of them and then just, like, obliterated them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that man. was wild, man. Like, befriending the most toughest, most, like, powerful creature there. That was smart. Not just that, but unleashing him, too. Good prison instincts. Yeah. Always, uh, always befriend, befriend the toughest and biggest guy. Befriend the guy who looks like he could kill everyone in there. 
Yeah. That's probably the guy you want to be friends with. Yeah. I also like Maurice. Maurice the well, orangutan. I'm going to say it like straight up. Maurice is probably the goat of all three films. Oh, 100%. Maurice 100%. is an amazing Maurice character. Maurice is dope as hell. Like, all right. Really Maurice changed the goat. game for orangutans. Well, I, I think orangutans kind of get like a bad a bad look at their image sometimes. They're but, a little goofy looking. Yeah, but orangutans, because of Maurice, they're sick as hell. Yeah, orangutans are pretty dumb, man. You know, long arms, fat and orange. They kind of look like me. Yeah, they're like an orange you. Yeah. With, well, just with longer arms, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. you imagine having arms that long? Like an orangutan? Yeah. I wouldn't really mind it. I could just like sit at my desk and like, whoop, open up the fridge and take something out. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and just grab my drink all the way over there. But look, I had to bend over just to get it. If I was an orangutan, I'm going to just snatch that shit and be like, yoink. <laughs> Damn, dude, feels good to be an orangutan. Feels good to be an ape, and that like the again the, the best quote uh, was when he has the sticks. And he, oh like, yeah, snaps it, and then he puts the two sticks together, and it's like showing like how much more difficult it is to break and bend. Apes together strong. Apes together strong. That was an absolute cool thing I loved in the film, and how that kind of like just was like a core concept. Wasn't it? Principle. I can't remember. Was it the second one or the third one where they started going like this? I think it was the third one actually. I think it was in the second. Was it? I think it was like a message or something like that. Yeah, because it would be like ape strong. They would, they would always just symbolize their strength. Like, hmm. Yeah. And, hmm. I, and I, I like how they like... That's kind of... That's some cool shit, They man. quickly learned like sign language and stuff to communicate in that. Even though like... Well, it was remember when like Caesar spoke? Dude, that was creepy. Yeah, but not even that. God was, damn. What, what I liked a lot is like, well, Caesar could speak sign language because he was really... He was smart, right? He, was, he had sign language. You know, it was interesting that like, Maurice knew sign language as well. Just from the get-go like that. Just because Maurice was taught previously where they were. I think it was like a circus. I think Maurice was from or something like I that. I don't know, but I think it's very common for apes that have been in, uh, in, ca in like in captivity or learn sign language. Yeah, depending on where they've been, right? Yeah, I feel like it's always like a, a natural progression. Whether like if they're at a zoo or something like that, you know? Right. Yeah, let's teach them some sign language. That's that's kind of sick. That'd be funny, man. Let's see what the apes got to say. And he goes like, uh, what was "Oh, it? remember that one? The what was it? it was the video there? Me want orange. Me want orange. Me want orange. Me want orange. Me want you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great video. I, like I remember that, that video. That, sh that shit's funny. Yeah, man, it's some premium ape content. Big ape content. And dude, the, like the craziest thing, man, that bridge scene. The bridge scene? The apes, like, going across the bridge, fighting on the bridge and everything was wild. Mmm. Yeah. Was wild. Well, that. Down. Even just, like, breaking into the, uh, the, the, the laboratory and stuff, man. Yeah. Holy shit. Breaking into the laboratory is cool. Mm -hmm. And not even that, we were also introduced to the biggest piece of shit on the planet, Koba. Koba. Oh, God. Koba. The Koba. Ape. And the thing is, dude, they introduced you Koba, all right? You know Koba is an evil piece of shit, man. Dude. He's scarred. He's mean looking, He's man. He's ugly. He's ugly as shit. Bro, he just screams, I'm angry at everyone and everything. Me bad. And, and it was interesting it's just because you knew. Okay, so I thought that he would have been a problem in that movie. And surprisingly, yeah. he wasn't whatsoever. He became a problem in the second one. But again, it was just like a really good lead up. Yeah, you know, to have him s get him out of captivity as well, because you just know, okay, he's gonna be a bad guy. You just know he, you know, yeah. he has that look. You know, yeah. it was a nice setup. I think that was a nice setup. Yep, yeah. and I like that a lot. And the it. evil ape. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, the bridge scene was really cool, man. I can't remember what was the gorilla's name. The because the gorilla uh, literally jumped on a helicopter and took that, it down with. That him. was possibly the most like wildest scene I did not not in a million years that I think. Gorilla is gonna jump at a helicopter, sacrifice its life, and bring it down. No, I didn't say that. That went hard. That that was really cool. That was really sick. Again, gorillas, like, dude, I, I'm telling you, gorillas dude, are the best. Gorillas are okay. Gorillas are actual scary creatures. Okay, so when you see like you know monkeys, like you know chimpanzees and stuff like that, them being giga brain smart is kind of freaky. You're like, oh, that's kind of weird. I don't like that. Yeah, you know, that's a bit bizarre. But then a gorilla, a gorilla is something different. A gorilla is truly terrifying. Not only Will they be able to speak to you? But they could demolish you in a second. Flat. Demolish. They'll tear you to pieces. Literally, with their own grip strength, they could just tear you from like limb from limb. Boom. Yep. Just like that. Bang. Rip out your arms from your sockets, man. And just yep. beat the shit out of you with them. <laughs> yeah, right on your head with your arms. But yeah, I don't know. Bridge scene was really cool. Bridge scene was dope. And they also, oh, I like how they utilized the, the bus. Remember when they were pushing the bus? Yep. Yeah, using it as like a giant shield. That to was like, kind of sick. That, that was, was cool too. Sick, yeah. Also, the, the introduction to apes riding horses, terrifying. Oh yeah, terrifying by all Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep talking about it, man. I'm gonna go. When in I so saw an ape riding a horse, something about that, that okay. was like wrong. 
It, it shot like these 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 messages into my brain that this is truly horrifying. Oh, you know this my, should never happen. You know what my favorite scene in the movie is? What? I'm gonna reenact it with you right now. Oh, we're gonna reenact our fa your favorite scene? Yeah, yeah. Okay, who, who, what character am I playing? Oh, you have to get a little higher. They can't see what you're doing. Did they stand up and proud? I'd be like. Oh, 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 thank you. That was my favorite scene, man. That's funny. Every time, oh, Koba, you piece of shit. Every time Koba messed up, man. You every time, filthy every time, shit. <laughs> every time Koba did something, bro. Oh, 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 oh. Bro, every time Caesar's just like, man, always, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. Man, he should have punched him in the face, man. My God, dude. Kick his ass! He forgives Koba way too much, man. Way too much. Yeah. Should we just slide into the next movie, then? Um, or... Like, you know what? Yeah, why not? We can just slide because, into like, the next movie. I feel like, honestly, we talked about... uh The first film's like, actually phenomenal. I do like how... um I, Well, I just want to say one more thing before we go into the second one. I just keep talking about Koba, and it just makes me want to talk about the second one. That's what I'm back. saying. I, I feel like the second one brings a lot more conversation for me, because I feel like the first one... It's a great introduction, but there's, solid. Two, there's two things I want to bring up really quick. I genuinely like how um, Will brings uh, Caesar to the Red Forest, the play and stuff like that, and he ends up... like Caesar ends up bringing his entire ape army to the Red Forest, and that's where they build their civilization for the second film. Yeah. That was kind of cool. I like that a lot. The ending to this film is one of the coolest endings ever, where you just see the virus actually spread. You see, like, yeah. the guy cough, and he's, like, going to the airport. Yeah. And it's just, like, yeah. this yeah. big thing. Yeah. That the kind of chain like... reaction of the, of the simian and I, I flu. Can't, I can't, that was really cool. Like, like, that was a good setup for a sequel. You're just like, holy shit, I can't wait to see the next one. Yeah, like, like that know, was you really know good. going down. That was really good. Those are two things I wanted to bring up before we move on. Now we can talk about um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Man. We have risen. But now we are here at Dawn. Yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, it, it, it's very, very like, good. I actually, mm -hmm. fascinating mm -hmm. that, you know, the whole time kind of in a, in a sense that Caesar in his mind kept hoping that ape was better than man. He kept truly hoping that, you know what, we could overcome these things together. We, we, we're, we are smart enough to do it. We, we, we have, we have the like camaraderie more so than humans do, but you quickly realize that Ape and human are literally no different. No. Unfortunately, no. they have the same problem. Like, even though I understand Koba's, like, absolute resent and hatred for the humans and what they did to him, you know, painting it on the entire human race. Pinning it on them. Yeah. Oh, what did I say? I think painting. Painting? Unless I heard you wrong. These ears, dude. Uh, these, I, these, these ears are big guys, but trust me, they don't hear shit. I, I don't hear shit. No. But uh, I really found that interesting. He just, Koba could never in any shape or form well, he get like, past it. He had long lasting resentment just because they treated him like a test subject. We yeah. Had, the thing is, you never got to see how much, like, how they treated Koba like shit. You, you never get to see no, it. No, because you, as you, he, because when he arrives to this facility, he's already injured, like, with scars he, well, and stuff. Well, he scars up. And the thing is, like, did he get that from the previous place he was at? Of course he did. You know, like, in, so you know, you can understand his hatred towards humans. Like, it makes yeah. sense. But yeah. the thing is, he's away from the humans. He's in the Redwoods. He's with all his fellow apes. Why are we still resentful? Why are we still... Mean? You're, you're completely safe. You're away from them. Yeah. They have their place in the city. You have yours. You don't have to go anywhere near them. Nope. You know? Not at all. Nope. And you know what the worst part is? If Koba didn't like the humans, right? Yep. If he didn't like the humans... You know, the humans, they showed up and they're like, oh, we need to get our generator and we need our electricity and stuff like that. If Koba didn't like it, he should not have interacted with them whatsoever. Yeah, like, that that's what I'm saying. Like, Koba literally should have just screwed off. Yeah, he, literally, he should have just, every time the humans arrived, he should have just went out and did his own thing and ignored them completely. Yeah. But no, dude, that resentment was building up, dude. And yeah, he, he had to keep spying on them. He saw them, all their weapons and everything, you know, to kind of like formulating this idea, oh, they're going to get us. They're going to come after us. It, they don't even have any plan of that. No. That's not even an idea. But in reality, sure, they have, like, fire weapons and stuff like that, but it's just so for self-protection. Yeah. You know, more than anything else. Especially, like, there's a simian flu going around. It's the end of the world. Make Some people kind of go a little bananas, dude, yeah. all right? If you've seen any apocalyptic film, you know not all people handle the apocalypse with grace. Exactly. So, you know, maybe a firearm or two is not that bad to have, you know? So there's a little bit of a, you know, yeah. weirdos and wackos out there. Yeah. And it's just sad that, you know, it's, it's just purely based off of misunderstanding and no communication. He doesn't try yeah. to talk about it. He doesn't try to understand it. He basically paints this image in his mind of that they're coming after us eventually. We have to get them first. 
Yeah, that was pretty much it. When the reality is just that they wanted to work together. Yeah, they were more than down. They, like, they, yeah, were, cool. they if, were super down to work together. If we can get our not. power and energy back, you know what? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but Sick. again, dude, it's, it's like hate is a crazy thing. Hate is, yeah. a, hate is truly a disease, man. It infects you, and it, and it only grows and grows and grows. Yeah. That's it. You know, that that entire movie could have gone differently if Kobe. Oh, just, yeah. You know what, man? I would have just shot Kobe myself. Just straight up, man. Just, uh, Shut just, up, Koba. Bang, bang. Bro, all the, the amount of times that like, Caesar had to, like, forgive like, him yeah, or forgive his ass. Ab- Dude, how many times did he do it? Like, three or four times? Like, holy. Like, bro, we, we need after like, three we times, need, there should be, like, a strike. He's out. Get him out of here. We generally need, like, a, a Koba apology, uh, kind of, like, a uh, counter at the top of that film. Yeah, how many times did Koba screw everything up? Yeah, for real. How many times did Caesar have to say, sorry, you dipshit? Sorry, you failure of a freak? Yeah, and then like, he goes out of his way, and he, he literally burns down their whole home. Birth and home. shoots blasts Caesar. Blasts Caesar. And like, he, bro, like... Yeah, and he pins it on the humans. And it's interesting because this kind of tactic, it, it's so... It, I, it's I like, so I like, human! I like it so much because I thought the entire time, the, the entirety of this movie... You thought you expect the humans to mess it up. You, you expect the humans to make the mistake. Yep. And then, okay, now we're at war. You yep. always think that because yep. you always think the worst of humans. When in reality, it's the apes. Yep. You know, it, you know, Koba does everything. I like that a lot. That was very good. It was, you know, it, it truly was, and it was really cool to see how it all played out. Yeah, and they got, not even that, but like how Koba was just so different in his hatred, like you know, because Caesar was all about apes never kill apes, apes always together, apes are strong, and dude, when Koba picked up, uh, what what's um what was Caesar's son's name again? Was, was it Cornelius or something? Oh, I think it was Cornelius actually. What was his son's name? I think, uh, well, 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 his son, well, okay, his son's I, I think, friend. No, 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 no. His name was Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes. Yeah, I think he had Blue Eyes. Cornelius was his son in the third film. I Wasn't think. it? Yeah, I think that was it. Cornelius is the I think it's Blue Gonna Eyes. Be, guys, again, we, we pre-recorded these films like a, like a month ago. We watched this a month ago. And we've watched so many movies since. It's been a while that, you yeah. know. I, but I know for certain it's Blue yeah, Eyes. Yeah, yeah, Cornelius, right. Cornelius, Cornelius was, was the little... baby in the third film. You're right, but it was his third son. Well, second son. Yeah. And, um... Blue Eyes. It was in Blue Eyes, right? Yes, it's Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. Blue, that's it, man. Um, what an But, only. like, it was wild how you saw when Koba was, like, uh, he, he told his, like, Blue Eyes' his friend, kill the human. He's like, no. Like, he called him weak, literally picked him up and... <laughs> <laughs> him over the banister! He killed him! Bro! No. You uh, killed an no, ape! That was some WWE shit, man. Right? He threw him off the top ropes, man. My God, that <laughs> My was crazy. My God! I yeah. didn't expect that. I'm like, what? No. But it was funny because the entire time, um, because the entire time, Koba's like trying to manipulate Blue Eyes. The yeah. entire time, he's He's trying to get him on his side. Oh, like... yeah. And he does it pretty well in the yeah. beginning. And so it's, it was interesting because like the human accidentally shot uh, Blue Eyes' friend. Yeah. Right? I think it's Rocket's son. Yeah. I believe. Right? Accidentally, sh- doesn't accidentally shoot him. Just shoots him because he's out of fear, you know? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And... It was interesting how uh, Koba was then proceeds to say the humans are bad, the humans are going to kill us, and he ends up killing Blue Eyes' friend. Yep. That's the and, irony. And, Blue Eyes and he just... was upset over that whole altercation. That was the main principle of him being so hateful of the humans again. And then he literally takes that he ape li- and he kills him. He, li- he throws him over the top rope he... into the audience. He literally did what he said the humans would do. Yeah, again, which was good writing. Very good writing, it's man. Hip- the hypocrisy. Yeah. He, again, literally, you're no better than them. Mm. And I like that difference where it was like Caesar was all about working together. Kobo was all about himself and controlling them with fear. Yeah. Because he shot, I will kill you, Abe. Caesar pitied you all. I will kill right? you. Right, like... Caesar was very adamant in terms of like apes cannot kill each other. Yep. And dude, Koba man, as soon as he got in, as soon as he got a little taste of the some of that power, man, he was just like, I'm killing all of you. <laughs> I don't and care. the biggest problem of all was Koba was just not recognizing the fact that he literally had nothing planned out. When they charged the humans, they got Swiss cheese and blasted to shit. Dude, they, so many apes died. So many for apes no reason died. And it was very unnecessary. They didn't. They didn't have to fight the humans. You didn't have to go anywhere near them. You know, it's just horrible. You charged the front gate? Dumb as shit. That's the dumbest shit ever, man. My God. And not even just that, man, but I think it was also just, again, painting the hypocrisy that they caged up the humans like they did to them. They basically did not what even was that, happening even to them the on Even the Caesar them. apologists got uh, caged up as yep. well. They were put in the bus, I believe. Yep. Right? The, even the they Caesar weren't apologists. safe whatsoever. You know? Yep, loyal to Caesar, get in the bus. Yeah, it was also very interesting, and it turns out, like, what ends up taking out Koba? Humans and Caesar. 
Caesar relies on humans in order to take out Koba. You know? Technically, they had to work together to get rid of the main problem. Yep. You know, well, not all the humans. Like, a small, a small, like, small group of humans. You know? It's hard, because it's just, like, in the second film, it's not worth talking about the humans. Like, they were fine. They were good. I had no gripes about them whatsoever. But it's just, like, it's all about apes, baby. We all about the all apes. All about the apes, baby. All about the apes, baby. But I feel like it, in Dawn, it, it does focus a lot on the humans interacting with the apes. In contrast to the third film, where it's literally just... It's more apes than anything. It's a lot of apes. Well, I feel like the first one is a lot of humans, bit of apes. The second one's... They keep upping the ape action, you know? Yeah. They slowly, slowly up it up. Yeah. And it was really cool to see that, but... um. Again, man, this movie was just, like, it was really good. Having, like, an antagonist like Koba, someone who really shows the apes that, you know what, we're just as prone to be as dumb as the humans are. We're no yeah. better. We're, we're not better. We're in no shape and form are we advanced. No, we're, we're not like, better than them. Unfortunately, we're not better than them. We're just as bad as yeah. them. And I like how Caesar even realized, he's like, you know, I should have taken care of Koba a lot earlier. Yeah, but it's, guys, it's, it's the dangers of, like, it's, like... Because you like, see, because they saw the mistakes of humans, and they're like, you know what, we can do better. You well, know, I, like, well, they truly believe we don't have to. We don't have to resort to what they do. Well, it's always like it's it's the thing is just like a lot of people. Like I see a lot of people. They want like a, a world full of peace, or they want this paradise or something on this on Earth. It's just like it can't exist. No. And honestly, Koba is the the prime example of that. With good, there's always evil. Yeah. You know, you can't have a perfect place. There's always going to be one person. Who is filled with hatred. Not even one. There's sometimes multiple well, some, ones. No, but I'm just saying, there will always be one. No matter yeah. what, there will always be one. And you have to also realize how easy it is for them to manipulate and convince others to believe and follow them. Yeah. You, you know? Because not only... Because these bad people are usually smart. Unfortunately, they're usually smart to an extent. Yep, they are. You know? They're very self-aware of what they want to, of what they want to do and where they want to go. Yep. If anything. And that is Koba. That is Koba. And it's just like, it shows you the dangers. I think Koba is the, the dangers of just like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Because his hatred was towards all humans. He just labeled all humans bad. And I feel like a lot of people do that in modern society today. You know, yeah. they label like one one group of individuals bad. I just, hate you. Right? Yeah. That alone already is a... Is, you're literally Koba. L literally, you're Koba. You're a piece of shit. That's it. You're a piece yeah. of shit. That's it. You know? If you, just imagine if you weren't filled with hatred towards a group of individuals. Yeah. Just imagine what a great world we would have. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't have that. There's a lot of uh, I feel like unintelligent new, people. I out feel there. like nowadays it's cool to hate people and hate oh things. god, like, god like, yeah. Hatred is so hyped up nowadays; it's insane. Yeah. And it's, it's kind just of like, re it's really sad too. I feel like more than anything, people look for things for people to hate. Yeah, which is very unfortunate. I feel like they literally have nothing better to do with their lives, and they just go and they seek out hatred or seek out the the spread hate towards people that they that don't agree with them. Essentially, yep. And it's just like, but well, why? Yeah, you know, don't you have don't you have a job to get to? You know, don't you have a life to live? Right. Like surround yourself with people you love and you care about that respect you and just enjoy yourself. Pretty much. Why are we gonna like focus on being angry and mad at people? Like especially social media. There's oh, some people God. who get off too much on the fact that they just can complain and whine and talk shit to people online they're like oh my opinion's right you're wrong it's like bro who cares it's the internet nobody cares you're, you're literally screaming thought, into the void not like, you're that, literally a nobody who, they're a nobody like who cares essentially but not even that but it's it's the fact that they're an anonymous to a certain extent as well i feel like a lot of people feel more like brave or more more courage to be horrible people on the internet just be, most of the shit they say they would never say in person to you no they'll never say it to your face no right they're just they're literally spineless cowards that's it. They're just a bunch of slugs. You know, they're a bunch of slugs in a world full of apes. Big slugs. You know, like, come on, man. What are you doing? No, no. Yeah, but I just, like, I felt like, uh... felt like Koba was just, like... It, a, there's a lot of people out there who are like Koba. You know, and they are the problem, essentially. Yeah. And unfortunately, you can't just get rid of these people. And you know what the worst part is? A lot of these people don't realize they're the Koba. Oh, That's the yes! worst part. A lot of people do not have the self-awareness to understand that you are just this thing full of hatred and you're just spreading it around so you know why they're so busy pointing their fingers at everyone else that they don't realize that they're the koba they're like he's the koba she's the koba they're the koba and it's just like bro you're the koba you've been the koba all along you've been the problem the whole time you were koba since the beginning of time yep now sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and just see like a skirt up <laughs> <laughs> but again like if I, there's one thing last thing or anything i want to talk about is that final fight scene with koba and caesar 
Oh! Yep. Oh! That was With that, her on top of it, the scaffolding and stuff yep, like that. And that then, shit was cool woo! as hell, bro. Man, not even that, but dude, Caesar goes in a disadvantage, man. Yeah, he's Caesar's injured. already gotten his ass pretty whooped, man. He got shot and everything, and he, he barely got time to recover from that wound, man. Yep. And Caesar whoops his ass straight up, dude. Whoops his ass. And boom. Cole was hanging off the ledge. <laughs> Help me, Caesar. Ape, no kill, ape. Boom! He drops and he goes boom, 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 and he falls down and dies. That was perfect. I love that a lot. Yep. I Caesar realized sometimes ape has to kill ape. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, because realistically, you know, again, some people, no matter how hard you try, not you can't that, but it shows them. you also the extent of Koba's manipulation. Even to the very end, he tried to manipulate Caesar with his own yep. kind of like code of honor. It's just this pity me. I'm a pathetic creature. Well, no, he tried to use his code of honor on him. Yeah. Ape, no kill ape. Yeah. Thinking but, like, Caesar would never again, break the code. Show pity to me, you know? Like, right? Oh. Follow your code. Oh, oh, great Caesar. And Caesar's like, no, screw you, bro. You suck. Get him out of here. Get him out of here, man. Yeah, and I think that's a fact of reality, too. That I think people have to accept in, like, even real life. Again, it, it's, it's a good there parallel. Are some, there are there some... is people in your life. There is people you are going to meet that you cannot change. And you have to accept the fact that you have to kill them off. <laughs> Not literally. Figuratively. Like, I mean, like, you just have to get them out of your life. Like, oh, that's man. just it. Instead of wasting your time being so upset over this individual, it's like, oh, why can't they see my perspective? Oh, why can't they? Dude, if they're maybe, just... maybe they're just not a good person to have in your life. Or maybe, you know what? This is just something you're never going to agree on. Well, and it's either two things you could do. Move on and accept that or literally just... Yeah, move on, accept the difference. Or, you know what? Why keep company that you're just not a fan of? Yeah. You know, more than anything, you know? Why? You know, there's, there's many options. You know? Yeah, I feel like that's another thing of a lot of people nowadays. They could spout whatever they want. They could try to mm. convince people in any shape or form they want with any belief you want. At the end of the day, people believe in what they believe in. Well, not only that, but I feel like there's also a uh, a form of um of uh I feel like one of the biggest problems that is it, it's kind of like not um uh, it's not on topic, but it kind of uh, is. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people are just friends with the wrong people. Yep. You know, you're in the wrong group of friends. Well, you know, I think as well, it is hard to make friends nowadays, you know? And it's, it's, sometimes it's hard for people to, to kind of recognize and accept the fact that, you know, maybe we kind of grew apart. Maybe we don't really uh, click as well as I thought. Well, we not did. even that, but you thought you were friends, but it turns out the whole time you probably weren't. There was something they were getting out of you, and that's why they kept you around. Ooh. More than anything. Yeah, right? Ooh. Because Ooh. a friend is someone who's there Ooh. for you when you need them. Has this person actually been there for you? Has this person ever been unnecessarily rude to you for no reason whatsoever and treated mm. you with disrespect? Mm. You know? You have to take these things in consideration. Were they ever your friend? Oof. You know, you have to also think of it like this. You have to think about, like, does this person actually respect me well, you know, or care it, about me? Well, it comes down to it. It's like, it's not what they say. It's what but they I, do. But exactly. But I think a lot of it comes down to there's a lot of people out there who fear loneliness. So they keep these people around them because I've got nothing else. You know? Yeah, there's, so they there's rather better keep people the, out there. Do they rather keep the company of these individuals who are not, probably, well, not even probably, most likely aren't even good for them, you know, it, for their lives. You know, it's not steering them in the right direction. These people are just like, they're toxic as a whole. All they bring is drama and just terrible decisions. Yep. You know, you don't need those people in your life. You don't need those cobas in your life, baby. Get rid of the cobas. Drop them. Ah! Ah! They die. Ah! Help me, Caesar. Yo, I love that part where he's like hitting off the beams and stuff. That was uh, cool. That's why I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's yeah, I know. Was replicating, you just man. you just brought it back to me. It's I just sick, I, I kind of just got a mental like uh, mm. vision of it again. Yeah, dude. Of him hitting the scaffolding and the pipes and stuff. That was sick. <laughs> kind of sick. Uh, on that note, guys. Third movie. On the end of Koba's life, aka piece of shit. We're Woo! moving on to the third movie, guys. Okay, third movie actually was um, War. For the planet of the age. Third movie took me off guard. There is no world where I would have expected that Caesar's son and wife die. That shit was wild. But it made sense why it happened because, again, we bring back Hoba. Caesar started recognizing he was slowly becoming what he hated. Mm -hmm. going against what it is beliefs yep. he slowly was becoming Koba with his resentment and hatred to the humans because it, all it took was what one human did to him mm -hmm. that was it 
And again, like, your wife and child died. Like, hey, man, that's going to make anybody hate a whole group of people. Exactly. It was very interesting that that one, that one interaction with a human causing that much pain and hurt to him, he finally understood what Kobo was going through. And, yeah. and you see, like, throughout the movie, he's also having kind of, like, a flat, like, kind of, like, um, visions of Koba interacting yeah. with him in, like, in, like yeah. dreams and stuff like that. Yeah. Because Koba haunts him. Yeah. What happened with Koba... Is a mistake he feels like it's so It's a mistake. He feels like it was a mistake he made, but he had no other option to make, you know? It's not just that, but it's something he regrets so heavily. Yeah. And he can't get past it at yeah. all. And, and, and even worse so is when he starts to understand him. And why he was the way he is. Why Koba hated the humans. And all it yep. took was for him to experience a human to cause him pain and suffering himself. Yeah. You know, but yeah, man, blasted blue eyes in his wife and boom. Dude, I did not expect it at all. That was actually that's a really. Cra that's a crazy opening to a film though. Yeah. Oh mm, my God. Yeah. But it, it, again, it brings forth like what I think is the most interesting part of the movie is just Caesar's just like whole journey with, tr with trying to like figure out his emotions towards the humans because yeah. you even see that when they find that little girl what was her name again uh nova oh they yeah her after, the, um... the sign that she had on her like the yeah yeah no uh, Nova. like you could see how he was so apprehensive about being around even any human he felt like it was difficult for it's because he lost trust in humans yeah. again he started to resent all humans he started to blame all humans for that one problem yep. when it was just he should have blamed the singular individual yeah, you know, again, that's a problem, man. Hate's really fast and really quick. The it spreads it's, quick. It's easy to generalize hate, yeah, and it becomes this very infectious and terrible thing. Yeah, and it just it spreads and, and just worsens you. Yep. you know. But if you could direct your hate towards a individual, the person who actually caused you the shit, that makes more sense. You know, it's more logical. It makes it, you know, it just that's how it should be. Yeah. But when you generalize your hatred, you know, yeah. to anybody that looks like the individual. That's a problem, dude. Because now you're you're hating a lot of people who had nothing to do with that. No, but you're gonna live angrily because these people are all around you. Exactly. So like you can you'll just... never have a moment of your life where you're gonna feel happy. You're yeah. always gonna be angry. You're, you're always gonna. Be you pissed will off. have to interact with someone who's like said individual, whether they look like them or act like them. You're gonna meet them. It doesn't yeah. mean that they look like them that they're gonna cause the same hurt towards nope. you. You know that's that's not the case. No. Nope. But, I mean, now if you're uh, not as intelligent and you're a little simple, you won't think that far ahead. Koba. But uh, Koba. but still, I really love that whole arc of his story. Of Caesar kind of like like finally opening his eyes to what Koba felt. And I, how he, more what so, he experienced. Not only is he haunted by Koba, but he understands Koba and the decisions and he made. And that's the worst part of it all is that he started understanding him. And when he thought, and when he kept realizing that, he's like, holy shit, like... Again, questioning everything that he's ever done. Yeah. You know? What decisions he's made again or what would have been wrong. What, it, it's just constantly questioning himself. Mm -hmm. And I really, again, I thought that was like the best thing about this film. And especially it focusing more on the apes. I thought that was amazing. It was Giving the apes more of a front, like uh, more, uh, the, it's pushed into the front as the characters of the film, like the main characters. Yeah. Instead of having humans constantly accompanying them, the humans constantly being these massive like focal points we it was have so no more we we have we have like the curdle no but he's the antagonist the protagonist yeah yeah yeah, the yeah. Apes. yeah yeah but i like that they, they, they the story was ape centric it really gave them a lot more of the centerpiece of, the, of being the film and i i, I thought it was cool yeah that was my favorite thing about this movie and i, I like that caesar i thought it was sad because of caesar's anger and his hatred right yeah like they have this whole other place they can go to this whole other place, like, it's safe, you know, it's far away from these humans and everything. They kind of found this next area they can move to. But because of Caesar's anger, he leaves the other apes on a journey. And he and his top dudes, anyone else that had been All a perfect, his top dudes went with him. All of it, anyone who would have been a great replacement of a leader for him to lead them off to the next place, go with him. Out of respect, because they care for him, right? Yeah. And because of that, they actually all just get caught anyways. Yep. And him not being there to help them and maybe could have, like, prevented this from even happening. 100%. And again, that was another eye-opener. He let his anger draw him away from what really mattered. Yeah. His revenge took over the fact that he had to care for all of these apes. His his own his own uh, tribe, in a sense. So that's what hatred does. Yeah. You know, hatred makes you just very narrow-minded. You don't understand what's going on. You're so focused on this hatred that you can't see outside of it. Yeah. 
You know, you, you can't see the bigger picture, what actually matters. Now, it's yep. like, it, again, if he just ignored his hatred, it, as bad as it was, dude. Killing ca- someone's Kello's, wife and, and child, like, that's it, it's a, pretty that's... bad. But, Woo! I mean, it, it's horrible. But then again, Caesar has a responsibility. He has a responsibility of all apes. He's the leader of all apes. If he dips and dives, dude, that that's a huge blow to all the apes. They rely on you the entire time, and all of a sudden you're like, no, I'm peacing out. Screw you guys. I got revenge to take. Yeah. When you have that much responsibility, you can't make those kind of decisions. No. You know, you have, you can't think about what does Caesar want. You have to think about what does all ape want. Yeah. That's how you have to think. And, and for a moment there... Apes strong together. Again, but for a moment there, he let anger get the best of him. Yep. That was it. And as you said, uh, all things went downhill. That yep. was it. And then we got, like, Shawshank Redemption with Boat with Apes. <laughs> Shawshank Ape Redemption. Kind of. Yeah, they all not really. I mean, captive. And I also, I still really was really confused about the illness that humans were getting. The one that basically made them lose their... Um... Oh, their ability to speak. Yeah, that was... I, I still don't feel like was I it, understood that well is enough. It, was it like the simian flu, but kind of like um, it, like it uh, 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 mutated? Was it like a mutated I don't know, because like, I, even Nova, like it wasn't like she was dumb. She just couldn't talk. I was like, she couldn't talk, but not it wasn't that, like but you a... also saw the colonel. The colonel shot his own son because he thought... That, that the the disease made them stupid. Yeah. And in reality, it just took away their voice. He literally shot his own son, not realizing that his son was completely coherent, completely understanding. Yeah. He just couldn't speak no more. Yeah. You know. He couldn't. Ex- which was I, which I think was actually a really good thing. Like it was such a good. Like at the end, you see the colonel has the disease himself. Yeah. And you just see him crying because he realizes he messed up big time. Yeah. He knows what he did to. And his again, son. I like that Caesar doesn't shoot him. No. Doesn't no. give him, does not give him that luxury whatsoever. No. He has to suffer with the decision he made, or he has to do it himself. Live with it or do it himself. Exactly. And that, was that, a, was that, was that was a that was a beautiful ending to that whole story. That was a really good moment, yeah. man. And Woody Harrelson, man, he's, he's a good. He's actor. a great actor. He's man. a really good I, actor. I, honestly, everything I see Woody Harrelson in, he just does a fantastic job. Oh yeah, we've seen him in a few movies that we've done for the channel, right? A few, yeah, but uh, I don't think I'm not. I too... think we've done. A, uh, I think No Country for Old Men. He was in as well. Was he? I can't remember. Yeah, he was. He was like a, playing a detective or something. It's been a while. Also, but... I was in oh, what was it? White boys can't jump. Oh like yeah, yeah, he was in that too. No, but what I like about it was just like it's great. I, I'm not so certain if I've seen him enough as an antagonist. If anything, so it's kind no. of like I like but seeing him as an antagonist. That's a, he plays that, a, he, he's, he's a good antagonist. But that's the thing about a great actor. A great actor could play both. Yeah, you could throw him into any. A, a great could, actor could play a villain or a hero. Yeah, and he makes it believable with uh, believable with whichever one he's playing. Yeah, yep. for sure. And I think that that's something that a, a true talent actor could pull off. Oh, for certain. Uh, there was one, like, the entire third film, I had absolute anxiety the entire time because I felt like Rocket was going to die. Every single moment I had oh a God. Well, it's because the gorilla dude got sh- got killed, remember? Yeah, he got killed, man. So I was thinking, like, oh, my God, are they all going to slowly die? Like, yeah, but they... Rocket kept being in, like, really, like, Rocket tense was... situations. That was the thing. They always forced Rocket in these very tense situations. And, I, dude, I was starting to have anxiety. Every time I saw Rocket doing some shit, I was like, bro, stop. Get away. I don't want you to die. Rocket, you're the number two. You can't go. No. You know, I got... He's, a, he's man, a day one. He's a day one, man. Rocket was a day one. But it was just like... Again, I just... Every time, like... It, it's incredible how much you care about the character. Like, it's an ape. But yeah, you care about like, it just like it's I, any other character. And you're right. And it, I think at the end of the day, like, I cared about Maurice. I cared about Rocket. I cared about Caesar. Mm-hmm. Like, even though they were apes. Like, dude, they were just such, like, compelling and great characters. You know what? I feel like that's the most important thing. I feel like you don't need... Your protagonist to be a human to be a compelling character and i think it's a big mistake you see that mistake made in a lot of star wars films uh, especially especially in worlds of high like hyper fantasy or hyper sci-fi they always yep. have main character protagonist human why i don't care give us something yep. different give us i don't, I, I don't I, need to i don't need to relate I, to the characters absolutely i wait for human. the day that I get like some kind of Star Wars project where an alien's the focus. Well, I mean, character. some people will argue and say, "Oh, but Ahsoka, mm, no, that, that's what, not what I'm talking about." I mean, like, just like uh, that's humanoid. That's not well, super alien. Not even that, but it's just like Ahsoka's kind of been like, um, how do I put it? It was, just, it was a character that's just like been around, and they're just like decide, "Oh, we'll do a TV series." People like Ahsoka. Yeah, but I'll, I would like them to say, take I'll, a risk and give it like to some kind of like cool alien, yeah, something what, very different. You no, know, what if we did it like, like a Rodian or some Ethorian kind of thing? Yeah, like, show us the Star Wars. Show nerds. us the origin stories of Greedo. Yeah, or even that, like, just you know, give where us. Where was Greedo before he was killed? Yeah, where was Greedo before cantina. he got blasted? Before he shot second and got blasted, or yeah. shot at all? I don't know. Oh no, Han shot first. 
But uh, Greedo died. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they can make the, the film Greedo called Greedo's first strike. <laughs> Greedo's first shot. <laughs> Greedo's last shot. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, man, are they called Greedo a blast from the past? <laughs> <laughs> oh that poor Greedo. That'd be really good. But yeah, it's just like I, I like films that don't that you know, it's like they they don't have humans as the protagonist. You don't need that. I feel like a lot of people feel like they have to for whatever reason. Yeah, it reminded me of of a thing that um I watched an interview with Paul Giamatti and he played in one of the original Planet of the Apes. Oh, did he? Yeah, he oh. was in it. I've never he, seen he, the original. And, I know, we haven't seen the original, so who knows? But he played an ape. Yeah, and he and his agent was talking to him about being in the film, and he was so excited. And his agent said, "Yeah, what if we get you to be a human so people could recognize you and see you?" And he said, I, "He literally threatened to kill his agent and everyone involved with the film if he did not play an ape." <laughs> he literally said, "I will, I will kill all of you." I said, like, "I'm playing an ape, <laughs> Planet of the Apes, and I'm not a goddamn ape." Dude, and you know what? That te- the utmost respect for any person like that. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's a baby. God, dude, I, I, just, I love that so much. Yeah. Again, man, we need more films. But to I, give us a that, I want, I want, I want them to take risks. I want them to take more risks, especially in fantasy and sci-fi. I think it's because they, they kind of like don't feel that maybe they can't like really identify with or kind of like, which is just stupid. We make the character relatable. They don't have to be human. No, to be I know they don't. You know, they but... can experience emotions just like you and me. Yeah, like you even know? like for fantasy, you know, you could make the main character an elf or something. Elf, dwarf, doesn't matter. I yeah, don't care. That's what I liked about like, even The Hobbit, even though, God, they massacred that story. The, the first Hobbit film was good. Oh my The rest God. were not good whatsoever, unfortunately. The first one wasn't that bad. So Ooh. ass. Boom. That was, third one was a, is a fever dream. I don't even remember it. No. It, it, it was so goddamn bad. It went bad. downhill very fast. Mm -hmm. Very fast, unfortunately. Yeah. It, it should have never been three films. One or two, five. It was but... just the biggest fumble, man. I can't believe Disgusting. you fumbled The Hobbit. You fumbled The Hobbit. I just, no. Depressing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God, now I'm getting upset thinking of that. Yeah. But no, all in all, though, I have to be honest, like, the, the, this trilogy, even though they're making a fourth, apparently, I, bro, I can't keep up anymore. I don't know, like, what do you do for the fourth? I, I, I felt like it ended, like, I you know, all the apes got there, Caesar's like, <clears throat> well, not, not even that, but I just, like, I, I can't remember, like, uh, um, it's like, I didn't watch the trailer for the fourth movie. I never nah, watched the trailer. I don't, so care I, to. I don't want to because I feel like it might trailers spoil a lot of films these Bro, days. Bro, the trailers so, nowadays are wild. Some trailers literally tell you the beats of the story. Like you kind of have an idea of what's happening in the first, second, third act final act. You get the whole thing told to you in, in like a too long didn't read. I'm, yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna go watch that now. Like I, I basically saw the the movie. Yeah, pretty much. It's so creepy. Uh but so it's like you said, in the very ending of the film, they get to their paradise and whatnot, and Caesar just... <gasps> Dude, I'm gonna be real, man. Right? Caesar, deserved, Caesar deserved her ass. Oh, bro, Caesar went through... He went through bro, so bro, much shit. That, bro, he had the stress of, of all the apes on his shoulders, man. He needed to rest, man. He, it, was just, it was too much, dude. Time to pass Who do you give... think becomes the leader after him? Cornelius. Well, Maurice is probably gonna take over, and I think Cornelius is gonna take over afterwards. Why not Rocket? <laughs> I, no, but I think because Rocket's not. I think it might be like more of a council kind of thing where it's multiple apes. Making I decisions. disagree. I do think that Maurice is going to take uh, charge of it all because Maurice was the number two most of the time. He was Maurice was always with uh, Caesar talking. They were always yeah. talking about situations. In terms of decisions, Caesar would Maurice, Maurice always seemed like to have like a level head about situations exactly. too. Maurice was someone that Caesar could talk to. You know, the, the, the kind of like a, the converse and be like, "Oh, do you think this is good?" And stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. That's what Maurice was. Rocket was the number two in a sense, like. He's I a fighter. Your, I got your back, man, you know? Yeah. Like, like, Rocket's he always got your done. back. He gets shit done. 100%, dude. He's out there killing shit. That's it, man. Rocket's got your back. So it's like, but I think, like, Maurice kind of will probably, like, set up Cornelius to become the leader. Yeah, that's how I see it, too. Or, or, I, again, like, I kind of wish there was not another movie being made, to be quite honest. I feel like, like it ended. I really, I felt like it ended on such a great note that I don't really feel like I need another one. I, feel I like, don't feel it. No, I do I do agree that if they ended it on this third movie, I would feel satisfied. I wouldn't care whatsoever. Yeah. You know, I feel like, again, it ended on a very good note. It ended very well. But, hey, they're going to make a fourth movie. I just hope it's good. That's it. I mean, the, th the three films already were pretty good. Like, I liked all it's of them. It's a solid trilogy. It's a solid trilogy. I good, liked them like, all. I like how they have, like, totally different story arcs as well. Yeah. A, a, a lot really of different elements to it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I think that's it for the Planet of the Apes, man. I feel like we talked about all Planet of the Apes as much as we can. Yeah, I think we can just move on to our questions. Uh, I likes. believe so. I think we'll just like move on to yeah, our so questions. Yeah, so like, end result. Like, oh, I also want to give a massive shout out to our editor, who is mm. basically 
the one who recommended us watching it. Even though it's always been on our mind to watch it. Like, we've always wanted Eduardo to Eduardo gave us a push to go ahead for Ed it. Ed Eduardo really gave us that shove. Like, like he, he recommended it a while ago. And that was one of the reasons why I strongly considered it being our opener three films for April. I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. I'm yeah. down for that. And spoiler alert for April, we have more trilogies. I think we have two more trilogies coming out. We have two out. more trilogies coming out. And uh, again, keep your eyes open, man. There's, there's, some, there's some good films. Yeah, shout sure. out some love to the editor. on yeah. his, uh, yeah. Also on his uh, vacation on this month, too. Editor's on a vacation, man. Yeah. He's long gone and he's enjoying himself. Well deserved, by the way. For the editor. For the editor, man. Come on, fellow apes. Ape strong together, baby. Ape strong together, baby. Ape. That's for you, Eduardo. That's for you, buddy. That's for you, buddy. But uh, let's get those questions. Let's get those questions and highlights. I picked quite a lot of me, them. Right? I sent them to you, bro. I'll just click this one first. Yeah, we'll just go in like uh, in order. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Um, uh, you want me to do this one? Yeah, by all means. All right. This comes from Big Stepper. Mm -hmm. Why not transition to a channel where you talk about a movie that you watched just before? Just describe films from your own perspectives. As it says now, you're just going to keep running into copyright strikes and getting demonetized. Uh, yeah, honestly, uh, we, we, we can fight them. Uh, to be honest, like, yes, we do get copyright strikes and we do get demonetization here. Copyright strikes R.I.P. Are... Spirit Away, by the way. R.I.P. Spirit Away. R.I.P. Spirit Away. Gone again. See you never. There's actually a comment I chose in here of a guy being upset that he didn't get to watch it before it got taken down. Really? Yeah. You'll see it later on. You'll see it later I, I I highlight that guy. Oh, sick. I felt bad for them. Uh, right. but yeah, uh, sure, copyright strikes are very, very rare. You know what I'm gonna do? Mm. I'm gonna open up the reaction for Spirited Away on my Patreon, and I'm gonna make it free for everyone to go watch it. Okay, right, so... I'm gonna still... open it free, and I'm gonna probably pin it as a top comment on that video. So I'll probably cut all the content out of it, so that they'll actually show it. Yeah. And I'll just pin that as the top thing, like, hey, you guys could just watch this whole thing right here. Just might for, just do that. Just do that for them, you know. I'll figure. Look, I'll work on it. Let's we'll what I can do. We'll, we'll see what we'll do. Yeah. Well, maybe we got. Well, maybe we'll fix it. Um. But transitioning a channel also is really dumb. What works works. Uh, transitioning into something like your content being wildly different like that will kill channels. It's really not worth the time. It would and effort. potentially kill channels. It's not too, for, uh, for certain. More or less, it will kill channels. It, you have to think of it like this, big stepper. All right. Uh, we are two guys that do reaction content. We started off with movie reaction content. Unfortunately, most people just want us to react to things. Movies, yep. TV series, anime, music. They just want us to react to things. They don't want us to do actual content for the most part. Yeah. You know, because th that's what we're mostly uh, asked for. React to well, this, react to that. Well, that's what we're known for, too. We're known for that. People expect that from us, in a sense. Uh, could we do something like that in transition? Maybe in the future. It requires a lot of time, commitment to kind of do something different, you know? Uh, not just that, but our download speed sucks as well at the moment. It's going to be increased at some point. But right now it kind of sucks, so it's hard to think of making content outside of what we already do. It's kind of impossible. We already have ideas of content outside of this already that we will pursue once our internet is improved. When the time is right, you'll see it. Yeah, it'll be happening. We'll be we'll be playing around some yeah. stuff. In terms of demonetization, we have a way to work around it. We don't get de de sometimes we, we don't get demonetized as hard as other creators do. We have no, a, you win some and you lose some. You, it's just a part of the game, and you have to accept it. And pretty move much, on. but more than anything, we are very fortunate because we do not get de demonetized as hard as other content creators who do the same thing as us. We yeah. have a little. Uh, we found our ways. We found our ways. Uh, us and the editor worked together. We were in the lab uh, cooking and stuff like that. You know, making that blue stuff. And, yeah, we figured something out, and it works pretty well. Uh, moving on to the next highlight or question. Sick. Thank you, Big Stepper. Big Stepper! We got... We got the OG. The realest of the real. Cypher. I think he was the first guy on the Patreon. Yep. Right? First Cypher 77. First Patreon supporter. I'll never first forget him. First Patreon supporter. We'll never forget him. Always in our hearts. Uh, question one. Peanut butter is not a lubricant? Depends who you ask. It depends if you're willing to challenge yourself. It can be. Exactly. To some, no. To the brave, yes. Question two, have you guys been sp spreading any managed democracy, or are you still mostly in World of Warcraft? Dude, we are playing the shit out of Helldivers, too. We are doing our democratic duty to kill bugs and robots, as they deserve. As a good man once said, a dead bug is a good bug. Quarter of the century, quarter of the century. That's it, that's it. Ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. I really hope you know what I'm, that's referencing. <laughs> Ooh, I think you know yeah, that we honest, know. Helldivers 2 is awesome as hell. One of the best games ever. One of the I, greatest games ever. It's so It's chill. just so mindlessly fun. Yeah, it's you mindlessly fun. You just turn it on, you go kill some shit, and it's just like, it's not, always pleasant. Not even that, but like, uh, honestly, like, big ups to the developers. They really know how to keep the game alive and make it fun. They update it constantly. Even they, they know how to use social media. Their Whoever's, social media is banging. The social media 
is absolutely great how yep. they kind of get the community all kind of like together and, and but, to be like um yeah kind of like make a camaraderie with the community in a sense yeah to get together and, and keep them all like active bugs. keeps them all like feel like what they're doing makes a difference in game yeah you know? it's cool again very smart people they know what they're doing love the game a ton man it's so good yeah, we're, so yes we're playing the shit out of that all right moving on to the next question or highlight give it to them mm. all right we got this one from danilo prudencino uh, Pr prudencio 3300 i probably butchered your name i'm sorry i'm sorry i am uncultured uh hello hi hi greetings salutations from Brazil, loved both Elite Squad reactions. Oh. oh. Recommendations, oh, Otto, will not even try. One of my most, one of most loved Brazil movies, although sometimes won't translate well as the funny regionalisms. Also, my favorite movie, Django Unchained. This one is wild. So I took this one just because uh, dudes from Brazil, big ups, big ups to, to the people of Brazil, man. I've gotten this movie recommended before as well. And uh, again, I think this is the biggest problem when it comes to, to Brazilian films is that a lot of the translations doesn't get the, like, just the native, like, it just doesn't translate amazingly well. You know, a lot of people say that in the comments, you know, the translations kind of suck. You get what you get, man. Like, it's honestly, a, even finding English subtitles to some of these films is so damn hard. Yeah. For one of these films, our editor literally subtitled it himself. Yeah, our our editor did the subs He subtitled himself. the whole damn film. The whole film, he subtitled the Insane entire thing dedication. for us just so we could... Guys, I'm telling you guys, I cannot, like, reiterate this enough. Eduardo is not only the greatest editor, but possibly the greatest human being on this planet. True. 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 That's just True. how it is, guys. But, uh, Django Unchained, by the way. Um, I feel like... I'm pretty I, sure I've watched it. I feel like I have, but I'm not too certain. It's it's the kind of film that I would have to, uh... It's the kind of film I would, uh... uh I think I'm getting the monkey hair in my mouth. <laughs> From the mask? <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like a film I feel like I've seen, but I'm not 100% certain. Like, it would be, uh, it would kind of be like what we did for, um, Die Hard. Sit there and watch the, react to the film and see, is this too familiar? If not, we keep watching it, reaction's good. If it is if too it is, familiar, we just, we no. just, we just scrap it all together. Yeah, reaction. this one I'm not sure, but I, I've seen other people also recommend, uh, Pulp Fiction, which is like, dude, I know Pulp we've Fiction. We've seen Pulp Fiction. Like, that one's 100% we've seen it, so don't, I, I, never I, ask for that I one. I could prove that I've seen it, okay? Yeah. I've had this wallet since I think like early high school, man. Oh yeah. It dude, like it's good quality. It's lasted so long. Yeah, it's alive and well. But I keep using this damn thing. Yeah. So Pulp Fiction we've seen. Django Unchained, yeah. I'll get back to you on I'll it. I'll double check on it. Yeah. There's also another one of um Tarantino film. We have a few Tarantino films There's left. A few left. We will get to them at some point. We've watched a lot of them, guys. And we would like to watch other films before coming back to it. You know, we just like to have a little, like... We're all over the place. We'll get there when we get there. Essentially, yeah. All right, next uh, next question or highlight. Let's move on to it. Boop, boop. Oh, yeah, this is this one I'm on now? Oh, yeah, this is it. Yep, this is from... Uh, Do One The Unknown. I hope you boys continue and finish some films that have drifted away, because I reckon you'll enjoy them again. Like Bad Boys 3, The Transporter 2 and 3, Expendables 3, and Taken 2 and 3 as well. So many to finish. Love your reactions. Um... We will get to them at some point, but again, uh, do one, the unknown. There's a lot of movies to watch. Yeah. You know, uh, and... The, the, it's just, again, I heard the third Expendables wasn't the best. I heard it was not good. Or was it the, or was it or was it fourth? the fourth one? I think the third one's okay, and the fourth one's not that good. Oh, I heard... Well, the latest one was awful, apparently. Yeah, apparently. That was sad to hear, man. Yeah. And also, I've heard, like, for Bad Boys, is like... I gotta be straight up... I really liked Bad Boys 2, but I think the last 30 minutes of it made me tired of the film. Yeah. That, that whole sequence... Bad Boys 2 is a film that's too long. It was I too long. I felt like the last maybe 30... Oh, it could be even just like 20 minutes. It felt so unnecessary, so drag... It just constantly dragged the film. No, I and think I got it, really... I think, I think that's the best way to kind of like explain it. Or it dragged it, it, man. I got it, so bored. It dragged on for the last 20 minutes. You're just like... You could have ended this a little early, and it would have been fine. Yeah, it felt so unnecessary and just really... I don't know, man. I was... It kind of burnt me out on the idea of, the, of watching a yeah, third film. But will we get to Bad Boys 3? Oh, 100%. Eh, probably. Certain. We'll get there at some point. Not even that, but they're also uh, making Bad Boys 4. So, yeah, it would be nice to do uh, That's the two crazy. of those. Yeah, uh, Transporter 2 and 3, I would definitely be down to do it. Jason Statham's incredible. Like, Transporter 1 was so cool. We saw some really cool fight scenes. Oh, yeah, you're like, right. Like, the you memory wore, like, the, the cycling pedals on the oil? Ooh! Ooh! Some really good moments. Yeah, there. I love that shit. Yeah, so those ones for sure. Uh, as Chris uh, previously mentioned, Expendables 3, not too sure, maybe. 
Expendables 4? Uh, not a chance in hell. Uh, Taken 2 and 3 as well. Maybe, because I really like Taken. Taken was sick. Taken was really good. Liam Neeson is just... He knows how to play that role. He knows how to play a really cool guy. That's it. He knows how to play a badass very well. Taken 2 and 3 at some point, yes. Again, we will get to all these sequels. We'll get to all these movies at some point. There's just a lot of movies when to When we watch. feel like it, we'll do them. Exactly. It's not like we'll never do them. We will do them at some point. On to the next question or highlight. Wee! All right, this is from Excelsior again. I chose Excelsior because, well, it was actually a pretty good question. Uh, are there any movies you have watched before which would have made a great reaction on the channel? <sighs> it, it, all the obvious ones. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, uh, Rocky. Yeah. Um, Karate Kid. Yeah. Um, this is just a lot of obvious ones, Yeah, honestly. It's a lot of the, the... The ones that you see that are classically big bangers for most reactors. Oh, Back to the Future, man. Back to the... Dude, even Marvel films, man. Yeah. Like, I've seen most of the Marvel films. Uh, I've seen a lot of these big banger films that do so well for people. Oh, uh, like, yeah. I've already seen them. They're not going to be done. Yeah. Unless people want to see us rewatch films that we've seen before that we, we haven't seen a long we time. We wouldn't mind to revisit films that we've... And just have, <clears> like, <throat> rather than a reaction, be more like a commentary kind of thing. Yeah, really talk um, about it and how much we enjoy it and stuff yeah, or whatever. as we watch it. I don't know. I've seen... Uh, I, 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 I don't know if people would like to see us do that. Yeah, I'd be down to do that. I, there, I I haven't seen The Lord of the Rings in a few years now, actually. I actually purposely have not watched it in a few years just to go back to it and, like, experience it again after yeah, some with, time. Yeah. It's been a while, a long time. But I feel like I'm a lot older now, so, like, I feel like I would have, like, a whole... Uh, my mind would be, like, more oh, open. And not more, even like, that. The movie's gonna be a banger. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be just as good as I remember it. It's already, like, peak... I love that peak shit. Peak fantasy. It's really good. Uh, recommendation. Would you recommend... Uh, would recommend a movie called uh, This Is The End. We've had this movie recommended to us oh, man. by a lot of people. Tons. It, we're going to do it at some point. A yeah. lot of people want it. We'll, Don't we'll, worry. We'll get to it. That 100%. one's all, That's definitely on the list because we've had so many people recommending this one. So yep. Excelsior, just you wait. That one will be coming at some point. Uh, and yeah, thanks Excelsior. Excelsior's always asking like, good questions and stuff like that. So I always got to yeah. be. And plus, uh, profile picture is kind of like a little bit biased. Uh, this one comes from John Campbell, 756. We are the Octo Crew. Octo Crew? Eh! Eh! This is the last one you ask people, oh, what what should we call people, uh, for, like, who are subscribers to the Octo Crew channel? This is the only guy who literally gave us an answer. Really? I think so. I Octo looked through other comments, there's like 50 comments or something. This was the only guy who gave me an answer, so I, I had to know. highlight him. Uh, you're just winners. I kind of want it to be more silly or dumber. Yeah, something goofy, guys. Something goofy. Yeah. Uh, we need something, we need a silly name to call you guys. We need a silly-ass goofy name for you guys. Uh, but yeah, you know what, John? Uh, honestly, just thank you for actually giving me an answer. Nobody else did. I respect that. All right, next one. We have this one from Peaceful Man six two eight three W Pod. I have a request. I think y'all should do a Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. Y'all don't even know Peak until you've seen it. Apparently, wants us to do I, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I actually had to read Diary of a Wimpy Kid when I was in high school. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I read like uh, I think a, a book or two of it. Oh, uh, I've never read it. Yeah. I don't know. Are these movies even that good? I Bro says it's peak. So I don't know. I don't and this guy, like, this was like the highest upvoted comment on the... the There's guy. no way. Yes, it was. This is the highest upvoted comment for Yeah, Diary apparently of a Wimpy Kid. there's multiple people that want us to do Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I read the books. They're pretty funny. I don't I know. Are the kid. movies even good? I don't know. You're asking like I've seen it! Uh, I'm, just, I'm asking Peaceful Man. Is Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie Is it actually, actually peak? Like, Is, is it gigabase? I'm, I'm, I was thinking you're, this was a meme, but is it actually peak? Is Diary of a Wimpy Kid peak? I don't know. Do I have to actually consider it now? I don't know, guys. Let us know. All right. Uh, thank you, Peaceful Man. Uh, we'll thanks for it. spreading the peace. All right. Next one. Give us the next question. Give us the next uh, highlight. Uh, this comes from Scrillbo Baggins, simply saying, I love these men. We love you too, Scrillbo. We love you, Scrillbo Baggins. Yep. We love you dearly. It's a shame you're... Uh, Two last films you were in were shit, but we appreciate you. Uh, this one comes from Storyteller... Multiple Roman numerals. Multiple Roman numerals in which I do not want to translate. Love your channel, but when are we getting the rest of the Dead series? Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Also, highly recommended The, the Pianist. The I, Pianist. I, I watched The Pianist. You did? Yes, I watched it at, at school. For, a sco for school. Really? Yeah, a long time ago. I don't really remember it. I've never seen I just it. remember the guy playing the piano. Ooh, well, you know, I'd expect yeah. to be that, playing a piano. I, I generally don't remember much about that film. I, re I, I, But I do know I saw it in high school a long time ago. I wasn't paying attention to it, though. I was a kid, man. I was drawing all the time in class. I never gave a shit. 
Uh, but the Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, yeah, we'll do them in October. We'll do them in October. Uh, again, I'll, I'll, this is a comment I wanted to highlight just to specify that if anything, you will only see this in October. We like to get spooky in the, ho- in, uh, the Halloween season. It feels That's nice. That's when we do a lot of the horror films. Yeah, it feels good. I like good. getting spooky with it. Yeah, so, uh, Storyteller, just wait for October. Uh, we'll definitely add these to the list and we'll see what comes out of it. At least one of them will be done. That's for certain. Yep, yep. Yep. All right, next one. No, uh, you just click the oh, same I one. Oh, I clicked on the same one. <laughs> All right, this one comes from Travis Gray, 8376. Damn it, I was watching Spirited Away, but didn't finish it. Now it's gone. No! Lol sucks. Adios, Spirited Away. We salute thee. We salute thee, Spirited Away. You are truly more away than Spirited. (laughs) We gave it a second try. Uh, We got another strike on the channel. It'll go away. Unfortunately, we're just we we're not going to be able to do Miyazaki films on the channel. No. It's just way too hard to get through copyright. Yeah, it's not worth it anymore. We we gave it the old college we, try twice, twice. You just say it's not worth it. And it's very unfortunate because uh, the Miyazaki. Films I would are love really to good. watch. I, I wanted to do the boy in the hair. I wanted to stuff. do the boy in the hair because I actually watched uh, with my girlfriend. I watched uh, Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke. And Prince- I think I've seen them, but I was way too young to remember. Princess Mononoke is a phenomenal film. It has one of the greatest protagonists ever written. I think really good really well done i liked it a lot and how's movie castle was dope as hell it's just a shame i I, I wish we could do miyazaki films on the channel but it's way too hard i'll probably have to watch on my own time well it will be the one uh rare occurrence that we get to watch something on our own times which isn't too bad no it's not too bad no it's nice to have something well maybe we could try other uh maybe we try other animated japanese films maybe it's just miyazaki maybe it's just miyazaki we'll wait for the copyright strike to go and we'll try something else that's unrelated to Miyazaki and see how that goes. I think that might be a good Yeah, like I know people want us to watch like your name or some shit like that. Oh yeah, we've had that. I'd be down for it. I'd be down to give it a shot. Yeah, guys, so uh, in terms of like anime, like, Japanese animated films, uh, just give us some time. Give, us a, give us a we'll, month or so. Let us get rid of the copyright strike and we'll give it the old college try again with something a little different. Yeah, that's all and we can really do. That is the last question and highlight for this podcast, guys. We had a great one. It was a wonderful ape week, a wonderful ape time. We went absolutely bananas in this podcast. <gasps> absolutely bananas. Secret emoji? Secret emoji is not going to be a banana. Secret emoji is going to be a monkey. Apes! Ape. You get to choose your ape. Choose your ape. Gorilla, monkey, orangutan. I don't care. Whatever one you want, that's an ape in my book. As long as it's an ape, we're happy. Secret emoji is an ape. Question, highlight, add some apes to it, and I'll spot it out. All right, guys? That's it for the Octopod. Thank you for being here, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Remember, ape strong together. Ape strong together. Together we are strong. Together we are apes.